Hi everyone, it's John from Lived Health and I'm here with Dr. Barry Singer from the US and we're going to be talking about remyelination. Remyelination, so we've, there's just been a session of lectures about remyelination and I think many people with MS think it's the holy grail. If somebody came up with a remyelination therapy that did it tomorrow, could I expect me after 28 years, maybe somebody after a couple, could I expect to just have all my function restored? Is it, is it the magic bullet? Well, I don't know about the magic bullet, but um, it could do a couple of things. One is that myelin coats the nerves, mm -hmm. right? So myelin keeps those axons part of the nerve, keeps the integrity of that nerve. Mm -hmm. And so when you lose myelin and damage myelin, it can lead to progressive disease because that nerve gets stimulated over and over again and it doesn't have that good protection. Mm -hmm. So myelin's probably gonna help people from becoming progressively worse and might prevent progressive disease you may be able to restore some function because if you've lost some of your, you know, sometimes nerves are cut, but a lot of nerves are just missing myelin. So if right. you could um, create some new myelin, you may be able to restore some function. You're not gonna, you know, you know, no one's gonna go back 20 years and You're stuff. You totally see that I'm not gonna get 20 years younger. No, but I think we could, we might be able to restore some function that would be awesome. But sure. if we can also prevent progression over time. So once you start taking it, you then stop worse things happening yeah and the goal would be frankly you know for generations coming forward that you would start on your disease modifying therapy plus then you add a remyelinating drug um so that way you're constantly stimulating that remyelination so even if you have an exacerbation exacerbation a relapse you can be able to restore function faster so that leads me on to my next question i come to see you you go dominic you've got ms Here's a DMT I think you should take. At what point were you also adding to that conversation? And this is the remyelinating agent that you need to take, Dominic. Yeah, I mean, we want that as soon as possible. And, yes, you know, one of the things that I've been doing, like at our, my center in, in St. Louis in Missouri Baptist, we've done five trials on myelin repair. You know, we're trying to find something that will stimulate. The trials that I've been doing are mostly monoclonal antibodies, antibody mm -hmm. therapies. It, it, it seems though some of these trials have failed and they've been, uh, one of them was elizanumab. And so these antibodies, you know, we're not sure how much concentration gets into the nervous system. So oh, maybe right. I'm going to hold you to this. Yeah. How long before how long? you have the conversation with a patient well, saying, here's your DMT. Well, one of my and patients told me they better have it back in, t I better have it in six months when they came back into my office. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand that. No, I think, I think that's going to be doable. I, and I would hope within five years we have something. We need more trials and, you know, more compounds in clinical trials. I have lots of patients that are very eager to participate in clinical trials. Um, for remyelination. Most of the remyelination trials are added on to disease-modifying therapies, so you're not going to be not on treatment. Yeah. And so we need, uh, I know patients globally are very interested in participating in trials, so we just need the compounds in our centers. Um, and that's one of the great thing about Ectrams here is we can collaborate, um, collaborate with other investigators around the globe with basic scientists who are working on these compounds. A session we just came in heard about new compounds and you know in animal models. And we go straight from animal models into humans in phase one clinical trials. So I've done that. So it's exciting to see how uh, how this is going to move forward. I appreciate you not giving me the exact answer, but as a patient like your other yeah, one, five, that five, magic five. bullet yeah. is what I want. Right. You know, I've got right. MS and it's just sort of, I think the whole vibe is make me better. But I understand and I want to be realistic that we're talking uh, five years up to 10 in some cases, but not tomorrow. I think, I think the, the drive uh, for innovation is there. Um, you know, I can tell you, it, it, just even the U.S., many of our oral medications have gone one went generic, some more are going generic. Yep. Um, so I think, you know, we've definitely you know, MS clinicians and scientists have definitely partnered with uh, pharma companies. And that's where all these drugs come that we have yeah. currently. So I think there is an interest in, in uh, hopefully with partnerships with um, people in industry and government uh, to come up with compounds that we can start implementing in the clinic. Absolutely. And my final question, because, and I'll say this to people there, we all want a cure, but it is my view that the internet doesn't necessarily provide them. So I'm interested to hear from you as a doctor when I turn up. 
Dr. Singer. I've been reading about X, Y, and Z, and I can get them all from Amazon, and they all promise me remyelination. Would you, I'm putting this politely for, for the to call BS on this. Well, you know, you have to kind of, you kind of have to see where the data is coming from. So sometimes we do a trial in the animal model and you can add a compound on a medication on, and maybe it's a medication that's been over the counter. Some of our, uh, some of our uh, studies have been shown that in the animal model that you can stimulate remyelination. Exactly. So, but then you have to really do a clinical trial in humans to see if it really works. Um, and we know with MS, there's been many compounds that worked in the animal model, but didn't pan out. So um, it's important that we have that data, but just because it works in an animal doesn't mean, and then you also have to look at safety issues with it. So, because um, everyone wants to go on to the next best thing, but it's hard to prove things in MS. And so that's why the clinical trials are so important. I'm going to make a point here. Dr. Singh was talking about animal models and Animal models are just that, they're mice, they're not people, the trials are quite different. So you really need to look when somebody's making claims and see, like you said, where the data is coming from. Because when they're not a drug company, and it sounds too good to be true, generally it is. It just want to relieve you of your money. You know, the trials are what we need to really prove that it's going to make a difference in people's lives and they're not just taking medication to take well as somebody said it's expensive urine otherwise so yeah anyway yeah barry thank you very much yeah, pleasure, I really appreciate pleasure. It. It's been good to meet you dom thank and you. you know i think it's it we are making progress out there and so i never give up hope um you know we we you know men were put on moons you know we just actually have a new treatment coming out for a, that, that looks promising in alzheimer's i mean diseases that we haven't been able to treat we can treat. Um, started MS, we had a handful of drugs, and now we have over 20 medications. Hey, there was none when I was diagnosed, so, and that was 28 years ago, but look yeah. at the way it's changed. Yeah. Say 20 now. Yeah, so I think we have a lot of promise coming forward. Just came out of a great session. I think we got a lot of uh, exciting uh, options for people with MS, and hopefully remyelinating soon. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Lived Health will be bringing you on-the-day highlights from Europe's biggest annual MS conference, Ectrims 2022. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on the latest updates in MS treatment from across the globe.